Hey guys, welcome to Drive Steady. Before we get started, we wanted to find out if everybody has been liking the new cinematic introductions that we've been doing. So share your thoughts below in the comments and based off of what we see, we will either continue or not continue to make them. But today we're going to talk about the 2020 GT500. Uh, being that we're big Mustang fans and Drive Steady has their own GT350, here's a picture of it. We began to think about the GT500 and what are the differences between it and the GT350 and would it be worth the upgrade. So stick around and we'll tell you what those differences are. To start off with, we want to say that the GT500 looks great. Ford really knocked it out of the park with the looks, especially with the front end. It looks so menacing with those wide fenders and the gills. They did a really nice job of differentiating between the GT350 and the GT500. Getting right into the differences, and of course we wanted to start out with the engine. The GT500 has a 5.2 liter supercharged cross-plane crank V8 codenamed Predator, while the GT350 has a 5.2 liter flat-plane crank V8 named Voodoo. While we don't know much about the GT500's Predator engine, other than the fact that it will have more than 700 horsepower and 650 foot-pounds of torque, we're actually quite familiar with the GT350's engine. It's been untouched for the past several years. It has 526 horsepower and 429 pounds-feet of torque, and it's a magical engine. We love it. The exhaust sound is amazing. The driving experience is great. The main differences here between these two engines are that one is naturally aspirated, one is supercharged, one has significantly high horsepower in the GT500 and the G versus the GT350. And the main difference that you'll hear later on in the exhaust tones or the exhaust clip is one is cross-plane crank in the GT500 and the other is a flat-plane crank in the GT350. The GT350's flat-plane crank is going to make it sound more exotic, more Ferrari-ish people say, more European. And the GT500 traditional cross-plane crank makes it sound more muscular, more American V8-ish. The next big difference between these two cars is the transmission. The GT500 is going to come with a dual-clutch automatic transmission. It's a seven-speed gearbox. It's the first time Ford has put a dual-clutch transmission in the Mustang, while the GT350 comes with a traditional six-speed manual transmission only. That's the only option you have as far as your transmission in the GT350. But one of the rumors has it that the GT500 is just not going to come with a manual transmission, period. I know they mentioned in the press release that the demand will drive it if they get enough requests to build one, they will. But at this point, it seems like it's just a far gone conclusion and it's, they're not going to do it. And it's a real shame because one of the magical things about the GT350 is that manual transmission. Should have found a way to put it in there from the beginning just to give the buyers an option because the, the manual transmission enhances the driving experience so much. And hey, the Dodge Hellcat still comes with a manual, so does the ZL1. So why not offer the GT500 in a manual as well? But 
hey, those are just our thoughts. We all know that the manual transmission is becoming less and less in demand, but we can all dream. Next difference are the brakes. The GT500 has these massive rotors in the front and in the rear. The front comes with 16 and a half inch rotors with a 16 piston, I'm sorry, six piston brake caliper and the rear have 14.6 inches of rotor with a four piston caliper. In comparison, the GT500 comes in a little smaller at 15 and a half inch rotor and six piston caliper, while the rears are actually a little bit bigger at 14.9 inch rotors with four piston calipers. Now you can see here in this photo that there's also some type of mechanical difference here between these two brake rotors. Uh, you can see on the left that the GT500 has a smooth surface brake rotor while the GT350 is cross drilled with these holes. And the reason for that is many argue that the smooth surface on the left here with the GT500 is actually better suited on the track, it performs better, it's more efficient, and the, the GT350's cross drilled are more for looks and they're not as efficient. But hey, we think the GT350's cross drills do look nice, but hey, we can't always get what we want. So that's actually another difference between the brakes. Next, we get into the exhaust tone, and this is where it gets a little exciting. And remember what I was telling you earlier about flat plane cranks and cross plane cranks? This is where you're going to be able to hear the difference between those two engine architectures. So we're going to go with the GT500 first. Take a listen. And now, the GT350. Can you tell the difference between the two? The GT350 just sounds more raspy and more exotic and it sounds European in a sense, while the GT500, while sounding great, sounds a little bit more muscular, more V8-ish. The, the Ford has done a good job in tuning it to sound similar to the GT350, but the GT350's Voodoo engine has such a high pitch tone and that high revving nature of it makes it sound so distinguishable from the 500. Now that you've heard the two engines sound off, which one do you think sounds better? Drop us a comment down below with your thought. Now moving to the exterior differences between these two cars. And first and foremost, we're glad to say that both models have the pre-facelift headlights from the Mustang. And we're not saying that the, the new headlights look terrible. They don't look that bad, they're okay, but we much prefer the pre-facelift headlights. So we're glad that Ford kept the pre-facelift on both the Shelby GT models. The differentiator between the 500 and the 350 is Outback, where the 500 gets the new tail lamps of the facelifted Mustang. We think those look cool and we wish the GT350 had them, but hey, Ford's got to put the newer stuff on the 500, so we're not mad at them there. Next, moving on to the grill. Now, this is where Ford redesigned that front grille for the 500. The 500's grille is much less restrictive for airflow, and you can tell visibly as well here in some of the pictures. Due to the supercharger and all the heat exchangers to cool down that big supercharger in the 500, Ford says that the GT500 breathes 50% better than the GT350. The GT500 is also wider in the front versus the GT350 and you can tell around the headlights with the extra openings compared to the GT350. Next difference up in the front is on the hood and those are the hood vents. Take a look at the hood vents on the GT500. They're massive. They're 
menacing and they look really, really nice. It's a great design. It's the biggest hood vent that Ford has put on a Mustang ever. When you compare that to the GT350's hood vent, the GT350's is more subtle and classic looking and flows well with the hood. Not to say we like one versus the other, but that's a difference between the two. Next, we stay on the exterior, but we go to the back of the car. Now the GT500 has three spoiler options. The first two basically look very similar to the GT350's standard wing and the gurney flap. The wing we're gonna talk about, and you can see here in the photos, is the track pack wing on the GT500 and the GT350R wing. Now both of these wings come with carbon fiber, so they're both carbon fiber wings. The difference between them is that the GT500 wing is adjustable while the GT350R wing is not adjustable, it's fixed. Looks wise, we must admit that the GT500 wing looks better, it looks cleaner. The GT500 wing looks kind of too racer-ish, but you know, nonetheless, it still looks good and the GT500 is a track car, it's going to perform well. So they needed to have that downforce on the back. So we don't blame Ford for putting that thing on there. And the last difference for the exterior, the wheels. We're going to compare the GT500 track pack to the GT350R. And both of these setups come with carbon fiber wheels. The GT500's wheels are 20 inches and the GT350s are 19 inches. And even though the GT500 wheels are an inch bigger, they are the same weight as the GT350 smaller wheels. And according to Ford, the GT500's wheels save up to 60 pounds of unsprung weight. Now, some people will scoff at that, but 60 pounds of unsprung weight down by the wheel barrels is very important and very distinguishable when you're driving. If you ask us which one we like, we prefer the cleaner painted look of the GT350's wheel as opposed to the GT500. Now there's something cool about having an exposed carbon fiber wheel, but we do hope that Ford offers a painted option maybe in the future. Next, moving into the interior now. And Mustang or Ford has done a good job in keeping the interior refreshed as far as surfaces and technology for uh, these GT level cars. And the GT350 got a little bit of an upgrade for 2019. And the interior is actually very similar to the GT500. So I'm not gonna show uh, a lot of differences here. The GT500 and the GT350 both get more leather and more carbon fiber optional. However, the main difference between the GT500 and the GT350 is that the 500 comes with the 12 inch digital gauges that you can see here on your left, while the 350 still comes with these analog gauges. Now it's a personal preference what you like. One is more technology oriented, one is more traditional. We, we don't necessarily have a preference for either one. We like them both. They both look great. And Ford has done a great job with keeping the interior fresh for the GT or the Mustang. And staying with the interior, one of the important similarities when you compare the GT350R and the GT500 track pack is that they both don't have back seats. Now, that's really important when you're going for track performance or if you're actually buying this as a daily driver and you just want the looks of the track pack, you want that big wing, you have to remember that you're not getting back seats like the GT350R. We think that's super cool. We like it when manufacturers delete the rear seats for savings and also it provides a level of exclusivity, even though it's not practical, but it's something that we like and it looks really cool. That's all we've got, guys. These are the differences that we know of now. I know there hasn't been a lot of media released on it thus far, and it probably will come out very soon and more differences will be uncovered. But at this point, in summary, we know that the GT500 has more horsepower and more torque. It comes with a supercharged engine. It has a cross-plane crank. It comes with an automatic transmission only. It has bigger brakes. It has a different exhaust tone. It's wider. It has a different wing. Remember, it's uh, adjustable versus the R's 
uh, fixed wing. It has bigger wheels, 20 inches versus 19 inches. And the interior technology is a little bit better with the 12 inch gauge cluster. Are these enough for us to cross over into a GT500? At this point, I would say no. And the main reason for that is because they don't offer it in a manual transmission. I wish that they have that or introduce that sometime later into the production of the GT500. It would be so much more magical and more enhanced as far as the driver experience goes. But for now, we're just going to stick to our GT350. What do you guys think? You like the GT500 over the GT350? Drop us a line in the comments with your thoughts. And with that is the end of the GT500 video. Till next time, drive steady.